Romanian philosopher Emil Sharan stands out as a bold, transgressive thinker who challenged his readers to confront the paradoxical nature of human existence. In this video, I will be discussing some of the key ideas in his 1973 book of existential aphorisms, titled The Trouble with Being Born. These include the burden of our knowledge of death, the curse of consciousness, and why bringing life into this world is, according to Sharan, a crime not only against ourselves, but humanity as a whole. We do not rush toward death. We flee the catastrophe of birth. Survivors struggling to forget it. Fear of death is merely the projection into the future of a fear which dates back to our first moment of life. We are reluctant, of course, to treat birth as a scourge. Has it not been inculated as the sovereign good? Have we not been told that the worst came at the end, not at the outset of our lives? Yet evil, the real evil, is behind, not ahead of us. What escaped Jesus did not escape Buddha. If three things did not exist in the world, O oh disciples, the perfect one would not appear in the world. And ahead of old age and death, he places the fact of birth, source of every infirmity, every disaster. Here, Sharan acknowledges that society generally views birth as a positive event, something to be celebrated, even. However, he writes that the source of our fear of death and the anguish that follows from our knowledge of its inevitability stems from the traumatic experience of birth itself. Sharan believes that birth, rather than being a joyful event, initiates a cycle of suffering that continues throughout life. Following this, he refers to Jesus and Buddha. He states that Buddha, unlike Jesus, understood the inherent difficulties and suffering associated with existence. Jesus focused more on redemption in association with death, whereas Buddha recognised the impact that birth had in connection to the human predicament. For Sharan, whilst death induces a fear analogous to when we were first conceived, he believed that the certainty and ultimate tranquility of its nature make mortality both a gift and a curse. He wrote, if death is as horrible as is claimed, how is it that after the passage of a certain period of time, we consider happy any being, friend or enemy, who has ceased to live? Say what we will, death is the best thing nature has found to please everyone. With each of us, everything vanishes, everything stops, forever. What an advantage, what an abuse. Without the least effort on our part, we own the universe, we drag it into our own disappearance. No doubt about it, dying is immortal. Evidently, life is not a staple of hope, but sorrow for Sharan. In this case, he could be considered an antinatalist, somebody who views bringing new life into existence a profoundly immoral and irresponsible act. After all, Sharan wrote, Not to be born is undoubtedly the best plan of all. Unfortunately, it is within no one's reach. It is known that Gnosticism was a primary influence for his views. Gnosticism emerged in the early centuries of Christianity, which encompasses a diverse range of beliefs and ideas, though it fundamentally resolves around the concept of gnosis, which means knowledge or insight in Greek. The Gnostics believed that salvation or enlightenment could be attained through acquiring special knowledge which would entail transcendence. Gnostic teachings purport the material world as flawed and by nature a landscape of suffering. It is this notion that Sharan held an interest in, believing that life inherently involves suffering, like that of the teachings of Buddhism as referenced in a previous passage. In this context, antinatalism is an appealing philosophical position, since procreation offers a platform for suffering to manifest. Within his philosophy, there is also a deep longing for freedom. He often expresses a desperate desire to be free from the woes of consciousness drawing a parallel with the freedom of the stillborn, who is spared from the complexities of life. He wrote, I long to be free, desperately free, free as the stillborn are free. This freedom Sharan yearns for can only be fully met by the embrace of death, though he describes life, despite its damning nature, as sometimes offering a kind of freedom and distraction from the cursed knowledge of our eventual demise. This idea was highlighted in the following passage. More than once I have managed to leave my room, for if I had stayed there I could not be sure of being able to resist some sudden resolution. The street is more reassuring. You think less about yourself there. There, 
everything weakens and wilts, beginning with your own confusion. For Sharan, it is clear that he believed our evolved consciousness is a thorn that stunts our capacity for an ignorant, simplistic existence resembling that of an infant child. Interestingly, he laments that our suffering is more often than not a self-inflicted phenomenon by writing, Imaginary pains are by far the most real we suffer, since we feel a constant need for them and invent them because there is no way of doing without them. This insight by Sharan is compounded by our memory being selective of recollecting our negative ordeals over moments of joy and happiness. He suggests that memory when governed by the suffering of existence becomes a mechanism that sabotages happiness. The function of forgetting becomes essential for our psychological survival, allowing us to confront each moment without being overwhelmed by the weight of our past. However, Sharan also observed that leading a busy life in which the present moment is the singular focus may be a cure for these spirals of turmoil, writing, when I happen to be busy, I never give a moment's thought to the meaning of anything, particularly of whatever it is I am doing. A proof that the secret of everything is in action and not in abstination, that fatal cause of consciousness. Thus, Sharan recognises that death is the ultimate release from the sufferings of life. We can, however, busy ourselves and live in the moment as best we can to forget and subdue the woes that follow from existing in a convoluted, unforgiving, but unique existence. The freedom that he longs for can, in some sense, be partially achieved through embracing these facts about the human condition. To conclude, Sharan's writings in The Trouble with Being Born are undoubtedly characterised by their gritty pessimism and permeation of nihilistic observations. Nevertheless, his work emanates with remarkable courage and honesty, even in the face of its unsettling implications. He compels us to engage in profound introspection, beckoning us to challenge the illusions and anxieties that govern our unconscious mind. Shadan's brilliance, therefore, resides not only in his sobering deliverance of undiluted truths about the burdens of existence, but in his capacity to help liberate us from the shackles of consciousness. I've been James Bergman, also known as Ahead of the Curve. I hope you found this video to be interesting and or useful. If you have any of your own thoughts on this topic that you would like to share, then feel free to comment below. If you want to support this channel to help me produce more content like this, then the links to my Patreon and PayPal are in the description. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to this channel for more, and don't forget to leave a like if you haven't already. Stay tuned for the next video.